To show you why I think more college lectures should be worthy of Netflix, I want to introduce you to two of my students. Notice they're both wearing the same t-shirt. This t-shirt says, I get my sleep in AGEC 1113. <laughs> yep, that's my class. They're wearing that same t-shirt because they won that same t-shirt. And they won it because they were the first students to fall asleep in my class in their respective semesters. <laughs> now, I do this partly as a joke. The kids love it, as you can imagine. But it's also my way of telling them that there's nothing wrong with falling asleep during a lecture. After all, professors do routinely complain about students sleeping in lecture. Then those same professors go to a seminar and proceed to directly fall asleep. Okay. <laughs> and what's interesting about these students is they'll come to my class, try to stay awake, fall asleep, wake up at the end, go home, and then watch a documentary on Netflix. So they're keen to learn they're just not keen to learn from boring Dr. Norwood here. And this isn't a weakness of them. This is not some fault or de defect of, the, of, of their generation. This is perfectly understandable. If every year Hollywood continually ups its game and produces better and better documentaries and universities don't continually improve our lectures, we deserve to be ignored. This should be corrected. That's what I believe. I believe that more college lectures should be filmed in, in like a documentary is filmed or perhaps the show Dirty Jobs. Like a documentary on Netflix, they should be captivating. Like a documentary on Netflix, they should be made available to the world. Well, that's what I believe and OSU agrees with me as well. Recently, they asked me to teach a course characterized as a MOOC, that's M-O-O-C, for Massive Open Online Course. The massive means it could be 15 students or 15,000. The open means students could be full-time students here enrolled at college or anyone anywhere in the world who has internet access. Now MOOCs are not new, but my criticism of MOOCs is that when universities provide them and give them away for free to the public, what they're posting on the internet is the same boring lectures that put my students to sleep. That doesn't sound like a good PR campaign. And so when OSU decided to get into the MOOC business, we wanted to assert leadership in it. And we decided to do that by specializing in putting together really good video lectures. And the course is called Farm to Fork. Farm to Fork meaning it covers how farms operate, how food is produced, all the controversial topics in agriculture. But what really makes the class distinctive is how we do the lectures, namely, Whenever we can, we replace lectures with virtual tours. Instead of lecturing about how a dairy farm operates, we take cameras and go to a dairy farm and make it like a little documentary of how it works. Instead of talking about how DNA is sequenced, we take cameras and do a virtual tour of a DNA sequencing lab here at OSU and use animation to help students see things that, micro, that uh, microscopes cannot. And when we do go into the, when we do have to lecture, we go into a studio, an attractive studio, and we use a polished script. So I'm reading off the teleprompter, and we use props, and we use animation, and we use graphics to make it a good viewing experience. I'm going to show you a, a, a little of these virtual tours that we've done. First thing I'm going to show you is some selected scenes from some of the farm tours that we did. Now look at this. I know, isn't that the most adorable thing you've ever seen? <laughs> How can you not? Oh, now look at this. My hand is inside of a cow. I'm showing you what's inside the stomach of a cow. Uh-oh. He took the baby cow. What's going to happen? Uh-oh. Ah, it didn't happen, but you thought it would, and you kept watching. That's the point. You would watch that whether I required you to or not. Now, there were some times we went into, we had the lecture, so we went into a studio. And this is what it looked like. We had a very nice studio. We had graphics. We used props. I don't normally talk that fast. I'm going off of a script. It's something pleasing to watch. And next, I'm going to show you some clips with the audio. And most of you know who Neil deGrasse Tyson is. He's America's most beloved 
professor slash scientist slash teacher. And of course, some point during this course, I wanted to do a crude imitation of him. And that's what I'm going to show you. What I want to do is I'm trying to explain just how, the, uh, how enormous the DNA of a simple bacterium is. And I could have talked about it behind a podium, could have written notes on the board. But instead, I decided to do the lecture in OSU football stadium. And you'll see why here. S. aureus is an important bacteria because it can infect both animals and humans and is becoming resistant to antibiotics. I have the actual DNA of S. aureus here to show you. You can see this is a really big sheet of paper where all you'll see are different sequences of four letters, each four letter representing where each of the four nucleotides resides throughout the whole strand of the DNA. So this is the entire DNA of the S. aureus bacteria. And to print it off, I use 12 point font on paper three and a half feet wide. But it contains 2.9 million letters. That means we need a lot of paper. It ended up going for 45 yards. Now, I would have liked to have been able to show you the human genome, but there's not enough room on this field. I don't have enough money to pay for the paper. Because whereas this contains 2.9 million letters, the human genome contains 3 billion letters. That's over 1,000 times the size of this. So if I was to print out the whole genome, it wouldn't have taken 45 yards. It would have taken 45,000 yards. That's over 25 miles. And with genomes this large, whether it's the bacteria or the human, that's what gives rise to the diversity we see in life. That's what gives us the fungi and the fern, the mosquito and the monkey. This is why most all humans look different from one another and all of us have different personalities. This is why my brother and I come from the same parents yet look and think very different. You've been told throughout your whole life that you are special and indeed you are, but you had the enormity of your DNA to thank for that. Towards the end of this lecture here, they even lent me one of their football players. There were some instances in the class when we, you can't go on a tour of the DNA. You can't show it in a microscope. So in those instances, we used animation. And we have animators here on campus, and they're awesome. And now we're using them to help liven up the lectures. And it works. Now, this is obviously an ambitious undertaking. And it required me to be not just a teacher, but part of a team. I'm listed as the teacher, but it was really taught by a team. All the filming, the video editing, the animation, that was done by the Institute for Teaching and Learning Excellence here at OSU. And I have a map here showing you the different locations from around the world that people are taking the Farm to Fork class. They're taking it from around the world. There's hundreds of students. And so you've got to have a good website and a very good server to be able to handle that. And to do that, we partnered with the Next Thought Learning Company. Now, I'm a little worried about the university because right now, we are falling behind. If you want to find the very best lectures in almost any subject, a university's not where it's at. MOOCs are not where it's at. The best lectures, unfortunately, are in the private sector. There's a, the great courses by the teaching company, and their lectures are superb. Their lectures are not only worthy of Netflix, they're literally on Netflix. Most of you have Netflix accounts. You can go and watch their courses, and it's much better than my le normal lectures. There's also a small group of economics professors at George Mason University who are doing some really good video lectures as well, and they're funding it through private donations. So the good stuff right now isn't coming from the publicly funded universities, but we want to change that. Now, I should add that we are not just providing good video lectures. We're providing education. You can take this course for credit. 79 students right now are taking it for credit. You have to watch the videos, and I'm going to test you on the videos. And we don't just want students to watch the videos. We want them to discuss it with each other. That's why we work with the Next Thought Le Learning Company. Their website, I got a snapshot of it right there, allows you to go through a virtual tour. That's the dairy farm tour. You can stop the video at any point and start a discussion with me, another student, or the whole class. So we're not just creating awesome videos, we're trying to create excellent um, virtual classrooms. So if you agree with me that more college lectures should be worthy of Netflix and you want to know how we can make this happen, 
takes a lot of things, takes money, takes a president like Burns Hargis. It also takes a university that is willing to reward professors for the videos they do, not just as part of their teaching, but as part of their scholarly output as well. Thank you very much.